all right cool pj thank you for joining me man i appreciate this uh we've known each other for for a little bit and uh kind of been around the exotic car hacks group and uh you know what you've been doing following you for quite some time uh almost since 2016 when you first started the 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 youtube channel how's everything going over there i mean youtube is a very small part of my business model so it's not like a big uh like a big focus point it just takes a lot of time to do youtube content and the rewards aren't necessarily like a linear block you know we we kind of when we started youtube for me it was more about making sure that we had a way to communicate with our members and people that knew about us it wasn't so much about becoming a circus monkey and i think a lot of people on youtube basically have to abide by views you know they care about like if i get 20 million and this is a good video for me did you know 10k in revenue whatever blah, blah 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 and we just completely don't give a shit so for me youtube is more like even if i get 3000 views a video or, or 60000 views or a million views a video it doesn't change anything in our business model so it, it's almost like pulling teeth trying to figure out viral content without giving up our integrity and turning into circus monkeys absolutely absolutely i get it i get it so i've been doing a doing a little research and you know i i know a little bit about your background uh you know where you're from things like that uh and how you started it, it's funny you started in telemarketing which is uh mm -hmm. which is where i started too and, and it kind of like gave me the understanding of how to take a no a million times and still keep going uh and you know you don't have a formal education really have you you haven't been to college you don't have no. a degree no. i mean i kind of really want to know how you would say that you know you can get as far as you are without those type of things because we traditionally believe that you know you have to have this you know education you've got to be a part of uh you know yale or harvard or stanford to really get to the success level that you've gotten to how how did you make this all happen i, I just think it's so cool so there is a there is a thing I talk about in my last book, Gator Choice, which is called the way we view life is based by the way we find life through the language of how we use definitions. So when you use broad defin like words like let's say education, right? You say, Hey, how did you get that far without an education? Education is all around us. Education is available no matter how much money you have, no matter how much access you have. It's there. Like, so there's no point in saying, is there, do you have an education or not? Now, do, did I follow a structure? So did I need someone to tell me what to study, what to look at, what to pay attention to? No, I didn't. So I didn't go to college, but does that mean I forfeit having an education? Well, not at all. I continued to further my education by surrounding myself with individuals who had succeeded in areas I wanted to learn rather than follow a formalized training plan. And I think when you can make the di you can make the, the difference between the two, there's a sense of accountability you take with education that doesn't necessarily rely on a teacher or a professor forcing the education on you. So, so you know, like let's, I, went in, I went through banking, I didn't have any experience starting in banking, like I didn't understand. Uh, how banking models work. I wasn't a finance genius at 18, you know, but yet I got a job that was 10 times what I should have gotten. Well, it didn't mean that I couldn't educate myself by seeing other people who were very serious this job, what they were doing, how they were doing it, and really pay attention to that rather than just saying, I don't know what to do. I need someone to give me a formalized training model on here's how this works. So when I struggled in leadership, uh, I kind of looked up leadership strategies, leadership definitions, how people lead others. Like, is there a, another manager who's very good at this? What is he doing right now? You know, so so the argument is, am I trying to fix my own problems or am I waiting for, for me and know that formula? So if you're a self-sufficient person, you don't wait for others to guide you fixing your problems. So you can move through life with haste because you're fixing your problems. You know, like you're, you're not, you're basically fixing a problem, then it's no longer a problem, right? Like you, once you, but if you're not fixing problems and you're not addressing them, and instead you're just waiting around to get a solution, 
then then you will have the same problem again and at which point you will seek someone else giving you that solution again and that's the difference between someone who makes it very far in life and someone who gets stuck in these definitions for themselves saying well i don't have a formal education so therefore i'm not capable of moving forward by being a prisoner of that word then they basically are a prisoner of their own growth you know absolutely absolutely i mean you know you starting where you did uh you know getting to the level where you are you know i'm, I'm reading some things you know uh, you did some research on you you've done over 85 million dollars in sales uh moolah.com is saying you're worth 50 million dollars how accurate are those completely numbers inaccurate. completely inaccurate <laughs> we've done now probably over 200 million in wow sales. okay and okay just, to be clear just in our digital media side uh, that's not even that's not even on the entire portfolio of businesses I own. In addition to that, my net worth is closer to a hundred now. That fifty million was quite an outdated, older number, but there's awesome. nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah, I don't think it changes anything in my life either ways. But I mean that it's 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 really uh, you know kind of encouraging and just super motivational to see someone you know to you know to pull themselves up to make it on their own without the whole private education i know your mom has been a significant figure in your life how much of family has played a role in how far you've gotten i don't i don't think family's played a role at all other than my mom did the best thing she could have done for me growing up is she taught me the power of choice and intent those were two things that I think a lot of parents don't teach. Mm -hmm. they, they teach their kids what is good and bad. Uh, they don't teach kids how to come to that conclusion themselves. I think that's one big difference that in terms of parenting as far as what my single mother did. In addition, to one big thing was that my mom also uh, did a really good job showing me that no matter how much life hits you, you just keep working and you keep getting through the bad times to get to the good times. So that was another hard lesson I've watched her go through through three different countries, you know? Uh, so that was that. But historically, uh, nothing has really like been more about parenting as much as it has been personal observation. I think that, you know, a lot of people surround themselves with what I consider to be an environment that makes them feel good about their life. I surround myself and create an environment that makes me incredibly uncomfortable with my life. Mm. Uh, this forces me to learn how to live in discomfort. And it also forces me to continuously evolve to become a person that can make that discomfort somewhat comfortable or bearable, you know? And, and a lot of times people ask me really stupid questions like, are you happy? This is the, uh, the, the pinnacle of stupidity in humanity is to seek happiness. So people seek happiness. So they typically find it in, in things like they're like, oh, I have a nicer house. I'm happy. I have a wife. I'm happy. I have a child. I'm happy. And, and they base this happiness in the stupidity of basically things they've attained. What they don't realize is that true happiness is bound into the evolution that human has. Part of the reason you find that happiness in being married or getting a kid or things is because your relationship is growing and evolving as a result. So people who find happiness in these things typically find it because they're moving forward in something. Think about a relationship you're in for seven years. You're very happy with each other, but there's no future in terms of you're not talking about kids. You're not talking about marriage. You're not talking about moving in together. Well, at some point, that path seems to kind of be steady. And so if that path is steady and not growing, eventually people give up and, and they lose that happiness because true happiness is directly correlated to evolution and so if you're not evolving uh it's going to die down and you're going to have to substitute that with things you buy or things you do for a false sense of evolution you know absolutely i, I think that's so powerful that what you just said about having that level of discomfort you know always trying to break the boundaries always trying to put yourself into new situations and things that may not be comfortable because you're, you could be very comfortable right now. Um, I mean, you are very comfortable right now. So what else is it that, what, what else is driving you PJ? Like where, where, where do you go from here? You know, you've got an incredible business. You've got 
you know, great net worth. I mean, you're set for life according to a lot of people. What, what's, what is the future? What keeps driving you? Well, they have, they have a very small exp. If someone thinks that someone with a hundred million dollars and in a network is set for life, they have very low expectations of what the human can do. Hmm. Uh, I would tell you that the monetary success doesn't really improve or, or change when you break the $5 million a year. Like once you have that, that money, you're basically okay. Like you're not going to be like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to buy what I want or do what I want or go where I want. So, so that part of it ends there. And that's been gone for me for years. It's not like, oh, last year was the first year I did that. You know, like, so it just... Hmm that that's completely done one of the things that becomes kind of a driver for people as they evolve through these stages so the game of life is played the exact same no matter you're broke or you're rich the only difference is how many zeros in your transactions so let's say you have a you're poor you're doing ten dollar transactions you're rich you're doing ten million dollar transactions it, it it doesn't change the idea your character evolves as you go because you learn how to behave in hundred dollars thousand dollar ten thousand dollar hundred thousand dollar environments right until you keep going up what what unlocks though at each level that people aren't paying attention to because they're obviously not there is is the options that open once you go with more zeros right like the impact that opens type of business that you can get into the things you can do and, and then comes the the all learning opportunity, right? Like, for example, like, you know, I've built businesses that do like 15, 20 million dollars a year in net profit and cash flow, you know, which is fantastic. Like, this is great. Uh, mm. And the people may look at that and it's not a 200 million dollar number, but one day when you actually get there and you make 15 million dollars a year in, in net profit, that's a lot of money. Like once someone like Absolutely. you can do that year after year and it's a whole different, you know, like once you get there, you'll realize why big numbers don't mean shit. But, you know, like a real numbers sense than huge, large mega numbers that, you know, are basically dissolved down. Right. I had another company that $400 million a year netted me $3 million. Like, what's the point? Like it's one liability away from basically imploding on itself. It's stupid. But the, the point that I'm trying to make is that when you go through these stages, new types of businesses open to you that you didn't understand existed. So like, for example, if you want to be in the insurance business, like not as an insurance agent, but I mean like a real insurance company, like you need money. And so once you understand how money's made at different levels uh, and how acquisitions happen, how larger businesses buy smaller businesses, what they're looking for, these opportunities that open for you, the ease of reaching more money becomes easier and easier and easier. But what happens is the challenge of understanding the impact of doing that also gives you the prerequisite of combining past knowledge and future knowledge into an even greater challenge. So there is a lot of power in, in just the opportunity of growing as an individual in, in a business sense, and eventually the finances follow. Uh, so there's interest in, in moving into new directions just from a learning standpoint, because it's exciting if you're in business, it's exciting to learn. You know, you're like, hey, I knew how to make $10 million. Well, now I now that I made $10 million, I know exactly mm. how to make $100 million. You know, and, and it's different Absolutely. to say you have a net worth of X and you know how to make X. Those are two completely different things, too, that a lot of people, again, when you're when you're at a $100 level or a $1,000 level, these conversations are going to go way above your head. You only yeah. see one number. You don't understand what that's like. Even if I told you there's guys here that are worth $10 million, you'd be like, does that mean they have $10 million in cash in their account? And I could tell you that there's guys that are worth $10 million, just reality check, that can't even write a check for 200 grand. Mm. So just just know that. like that That's the type of thing and misleading net worths can be. Yes. So you can look at someone's net worth and be like, wow, that's a $50 million guy and he's got a castle in Scotland. Okay, mm. well, castle in Scotland costs 300 grand or 500 grand. A house in Florida costs five million dollars. You know, right, like, so right. Like what I'm saying is, they don't. You know, what I mean? like it's easy to look at a castle and make sense of it and say, "Well, this guy's got to be loaded. He's got a castle." But yeah, if you understand how money works, it's not always uh, just looking at size, right? Just it's like saying a bigger car is not necessarily more expensive than a tiny sports car, right? Mm, absolutely. So you know, we all you know tend to obviously talk about our successes, you know, you've had plenty. What are, what are some of the failures that you've had? What are some of the trials and the, and the tribulations that people don't see? They, they see you now, right? 
and and that's what most people do see they like they see the, the the glitter they see the glam they see the you know they see the money they see the cars they see the watches what how did how did how did you evolve to that what did you have to go through to get to this i mean, were there any failures were there any so well failures are in my opinion uh giving up mm. so that's one thing i I never given up so i never considered to have a failure i've had the businesses or business opportunities where i didn't put necessarily as much effort once my own business model was flawed um but then the argument was we pivoted and it eventually worked so was mm. that a failure or was that a learning experience from inexperience you know i mean right. i spent for example four years working for forty thousand dollars not a year to be clear four years made forty thousand dollars uh total okay so it, that's split between three people so that meant that uh i was making twelve thousand dollars <laughs> annualized over four years not even you know like so twelve thousand dollars after four years right that means i was working for four years at a rate of like what three thousand dollars uh for the year not for an hour just to be clear you know yeah so was that a failure well no it was four years invested in my own education as practice because i was getting in an industry i didn't understand mm. but here's the argument the year after i made 300 grand uh in one year the year after i made four million dollars and now every time i now launch a similar business i make a million dollars a day so mm. try to try to put that context now yes on year four if i look back i'm making 3k a year but if i add now the success i have 20 years later like all combined together well even my year one while it was educational in nature uh would have technically been a 10 million dollar year right if yeah. you count it that way like yeah. so so the way i look at it is basically like what are you willing to do for what you believe in at any given time in those four years i could have given up and said this business does not work i am not making money but here's the argument hmm. if everyone else in this business is making money then why am i not is it me or the business well they're making money so how the fuck can the business be flawed doesn't make sense mm. right if you tell me like there's no way i'm doing youtube for five years and i haven't made five dollars i would argue with you that there are people right now making over a million dollars on youtube so is youtube flawed or are you flawed if you are flawed then you can't blame the business for why you haven't figured out how to interject yourself in the business but most people give up because they didn't want to be in that business they just thought it was easy to make money in that business. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's a hell of a point. You know, when my philosophy has always been that undefeated philosophy. So just like you said, as long as you're still in the game, as long as you haven't given up, I consider that undefeated. Um, and it, you know, every hurdle, every obstacle is always a learning experience. And just like you said, Hey, you know, it's not that, uh, you know, the business is flawed. Maybe you just need to pivot a little bit here or a little bit there. So where, yeah, where I mean, that's how it work. I mean, mm -hmm. the pivot is the necessity, you know, it's not an option. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so what's next? So we've got, we've got, uh, you know, some of your, you know, your businesses that most people know, which are exotic car hacks, uh, WTA, um, there's, there's other things that I think that, you know, maybe you don't advertise as much. Uh, what, what else is in the mix here for PJ in the future? So I have, I have a very large digital media portfolio of companies that are, like you said, exotic car hacks, watch training Academy. We now own Lux travel hacks. We have a new one coming out called secure to handbag. We also, uh, online properties, uh, that we're involved in that I can't give you exact like names of. But we have technology patents. We're in the technology game itself uh, in that same company. So it's all digital, right? The other side of my business is also an investment business. So we floor plan a very large number of car dealers and jewelers across the U.S. with capital for them to be to be able to uh, actually buy cars and watches. So as a result of basically intermix them into our digital portfolio by providing them the funding uh, to be able to trade at rates that sometimes are very profitable for us in a 12 to 24 month span and sometimes even in a shorter 30 day span. So this has been a huge part of our business. Now, in addition to that, 
Uh, also, I'm a very well-known collector of cars and watches. Mm. Uh, those are all seven-figure businesses in just trading my own inventory of cars and watches, not as a dealer, uh, but as an individual. Like meaning like uh, collecting cars can be very profitable. You can buy a car and they make half a million. You need capital to do that, but it's still, you know, money, right? doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, and outside of that, we really focus on what we do. So, you know, I obviously continue to sell my books on Amazon as well. I'm, a, I'm big on writing on human awareness, consciousness and things like that. So I continue to do that study. And the majority of, I would say the majority of our money is basically divided into these two core companies, you know, either investing in alternative assets, either personally or through our floor plan, uh, or going into these from a digital media standpoint and selling uh, just courses and coaching and, and digital media around that. That's amazing. I, I, uh, I'm almost through with the first book, uh, the third circle theory. I wanted to, uh, get done with it and at least get through most of it. I, I just, I, a lot of it is just so, so interesting on the circles that individuals go through in their life. Uh, the first circle being the birth, the, the dreamer, the settler, uh, and then the second circle would be, you know, what most people consider is, is successful, right? Uh, which is, you know, you're making money, you know, you, you're doing well. How do you get, to, what, what, first of all, what circle do you believe that you're in right now? So there's more than three circles. Just so okay. you know. There's three circles. That's the first book. Uh, so the three circles are the baseline to the birth of consciousness, not the end. So people think when they get to their circle, they go, oh, I'm, I'm done. I, I got to my goal. And it's like, no, no, no. That's just the beginning, you know? So a lot of times uh, what they don't realize is that in order to, to really keep uh, going past, right, and going to the next level, you absolutely need to understand the stages of each level. So a lot of times people say, well, the money factor is mastered, so I'm already in the third. And it's like, no, you're not. Uh, zero correlation with that. There are stages to each, as you can see in the book, and each needs to be mastered. If you skip one, you never really left that circle, even though in your head you think, well, I have most of the qualities in that circle. So the ideology of the, the three circles is really simple. The first circle is about awareness and your capacity to understand uh, where you are. The second circle is about identity, the ability to understand what societal identity is and the mastery of it and into the evolution of cosmic identity. And the third circle is the birth of consciousness, the birth of it, the birth of who you truly are, not what stages you have to go through to figure out your identity. So when these elements take place, then and only then life begins. So it's a very different dynamic. You see, most people will stay stuck and won't even evolve past the second, mm -hmm. thinking that if they get to the third, it's the end, when really it's getting to the third, it's the beginning. Even Carl Jung, one of the greatest psychologists, philosophers, uh, of our generation, I would say even past generation has said is that life starts at 40. And a lot of people think, well, I gotta be done by 40. Well, I tell you, most people don't realize that money or not, who you are gets forged by 40. Mm. So, and that's assuming you've worked on it for 30. You know, that's assuming yeah. you've worked on it from a very young age of 15 and 13 or whenever you gain some level of understanding about where you are. Mm -hmm. So, so when that occurs, only then life begins. And so, you know, in my book, I, I break down these stages humans go through and what to look out for to ensure you're in a position where you don't look back 30 years later and regret why you didn't do X, Y, and Z. And now why you're confused and can't get true to yourself on how to move forward. You know, if you're unmotivated, if you found yourself to not understand why you keep switching jobs, why you can't find fulfillment and happiness in anything you do, you're just skipping steps. And all these books do is they just remind you of what you're missing that you can go back and unlock to make sure you move forward. How, how much is, how much is enough? Is there a number? I mean, m the question like that told all, you, life, does, yeah. life doesn't change once you get over 5 million a year, like okay. once you net five year, like after taxes, you, life doesn't really change. You have access to all the best things life has to offer basically. So is that now, it? You could go in, you mm. could go in excess. You could yeah. say, I need excess. I would like a, $30 million house somewhere. Yeah. That's, that's considered excess, but mm. at that rate, you still have significant, uh, opportunity to basically win, uh, in any aspect of experiencing life. 
you know, one of my big beliefs is that the, one of the goals in, in life to grow uh, as an individual is to have better experiences on the daily. Like, you know, people say, well, why do you need a referral? Because you don't have to go from point A to point B just to get there. You can actually have an experience going to work and right. you can have an experience going to the shopping center or you can just get there. And so when you value time, every opportunity to have an experience is significantly more important, right, than just getting there. So the experience of it is just as exciting. And the more of an experience you have, the more excited you become, right? So uh, like the argument is always like, why do we go on vacation? Why do we go to better steakhouses or better food places to eat? Because we have a better experience right right so the the point is until our senses are broadened and we can have better experiences all the time uh we're always going to be basically in a place where we seek better but at five mil i guarantee you all the experiences are basically they're not necessarily better uh they're just the same if that makes sense they're just a, a diff like you could argue with me like my experience is better in a ferrari than a lamborghini but i could argue with you that it's the same experience it's just your preference it's not necessarily a better or worse experience. It's something you chose that is better for you, you know? Is that the goal is to keep on kind of just having better experiences on a daily just to, I mean, we're, we're, what's, what's the, what is the end of all this? You know, that question of what are we doing here? What is this, what is this all about? I mean, at the end of the, the day, at the end of the day, it's, it's all going to remain here. Pharaohs build pyramids. Well, They're so still that's, here. That's it. So that's an argument that comes from your philosophy on how you look at life, right? Mm -hmm. that there, is, there is a reality to what you're saying. The material stuff stays back. But the experience of it, the argument is, doesn't automatically stay back. So if you're like, so this is an argument that neither one of us can win because it comes through your core belief. So it's not a question of, uh, like, is my definition of this more accurate than yours or not? Let's mm -hmm. let's take a very generic uh, angle to this, okay? Let's say you're a person that believes in uh, the existence of a God, right? Like, you believe in that there's a God and there's a heaven and hell after. Mm -hmm. And so you're basically going somewhere uh, and, and there's eternal, uh, like, nothingness, basically, just a path to the next level of your life. And it has nothing to do with anything else, right? Like, you just believe in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is nothing in my worldview that is going to change what your belief is or your experience is because all these things are basically bullshit. It doesn't matter. And to you, you know, you were a good human and you're basically going to heaven and that's it. And what I'm saying is that's great that this is not a problem, but that's the core of your belief. So you're going to live based on your inner belief, right? However you feel you've been, you, you, what you believe, whatever, now that you're right or wrong, you're going to find that at some point, right? So right, right. The argument is you're not going to come back to tell me if you're right or wrong. <laughs> right, right. You're just right. going to have to live with that, with that specific thing, right? So what happens, though, through that process is that my worldview is that we come back and we don't just come back here. That, that there are 11 dimensions on earth and that our path here in humanity is to basically master the third so we can evolve to the fourth. There are 48 personalities to master, as I talk about in Gator Choice. And so each lifetime is an opportunity to master the skills necessary to basically exist and have an identity without having a body. So my belief is that we do take back experiences. Mm -hmm. We do take back the human experience as a learning curve and a learning opportunity. Now, we, again, my belief is different than one mm -hmm. that is perhaps biblical in nature and will tell you that, you know, it ends with, with each end and perhaps there's a beginning, but it's not here anymore. Make sense? What started the thought process, PJ? Like, you know, you don't just, you know, you know, I, I don't know. Did you just come up with this? I mean, do you, does he, do you, do you sit on a mountaintop and were you enlightened? I mean, like. How did I, you know, how did all this evolve? Like, because, you know, this so, is, no. this is not uh, stuff that everybody, a normal person thinks about or can uh, even, or so can even, you know, it should, put it, put it down be. on paper. I, I would say it should be. So mm. I, I know they don't think about it. It should be right. People, people should question their existence. I think that's one thing people don't do enough. They assume they're entitled to their existence and mm. I don't. So I question why I'm here. I try to make sense of the purpose that I found in myself. Now, one thing, one of the things I talk about is in my books, Third Circle Theory, even the first one, 
is that self mastery is the entry point of identity. So, so something that a lot of people don't realize is the second circle is about identity. Okay. So it's about societal identity and cosmic identity. If you're a master of your societal identity, you can't evolve to a cosmic identity and answer these questions. Most hmm. people have never mastered society. They've never mastered money. They've never mastered a trade. They simply have jobs. Even if they own their own business, they're buying themselves money and time. And this is a very different thing. You have to have a very, very different view on the world to question these things and uh, start paying attention to the world around you and what does it mean to your experience? Like, what do you want to experience versus what are you forced to experience? People aren't asking these kind of questions, so they're never really uh, moving forward, if that makes sense. They're just kind of moving in circles on themselves until time goes by. So no, I wasn't enlightened. I think what happens is with each stage of mastery, I've discovered more and more about what I want the meaning of my life to be specifically, not necessarily the meaning to others and what their perception of life is. And I have accepted that my life experience is unique to myself and has no correlation on the life experiences of others and what they wish to experience or not. So that is why I don't try to impose my ways on people or tell people that this is the way they should live or anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a big believer that there is a lot of value in my own discoveries, which have led me to write books. So those who want to understand this worldview can therefore uh, engage with it and that they choose to follow it or not is up to them. Like, doesn't make a difference to me. But there is a reality to what I consider like a really good opportunity to really understand yourself. And this, this equation is really simple. If you can negate yourself every day, then no one can say their worldview holds more weight than yours because you've negated yourself every day. So mm. If you, for example, have an idea in your head and someone has a better idea, then they've just negated your view. Meaning like you, you knew that going left was the best way to get to California, but someone who's already gone left said, no, that road doesn't exist anymore. Well, then your path has to change now, right? Because someone has taken that path and has told you it doesn't work. Like that's how science works too, right? It doesn't yeah. work that way. This, I tried this, this equation doesn't add up. So what ends up happening is the more you can negate yourself, then the more you reach a point where you can't anymore and new ideas can come to you and say, Hey, I agree on what you're saying. And it's inaccurate. I go, okay, tell me your, they tell it to me. And I go, well, it can't work because I already tried it. Here's why it doesn't work. But have you tried mine? Well, no. Okay. So I've negated yours, but you haven't negated mine. So technically mine still holds higher value because you haven't been able to prove it wrong. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very interesting. Do you, do you think about your own mortality? Do you think about, I mean, obviously you, you have, uh, I mean, do you think about these, you know, this drop, uh, you know, uh, in time that our lives are and, you know, you, you know, what is it that you're doing and what is it that you're doing it for? I mean, obviously you have, I mean, you've written, you, you've written about this, but it, have you thought about, uh, you, you know, what, happens after have i thought about my own mortality define yes. mortality have you thought about death have you thought about like this yeah. is i mean I, i've had cancer once uh, i accepted that if i was going to die have i lived the experience i want to live for the time i was given to live sure mm -hmm. do i mind leaving early no i don't care like it doesn't change anything do I, am I worried that my child is going to be left fatherless? Am I worried that my wife is not going to have a, no, because these things are not my experience to have anymore. They're theirs. And if this was the intent of their experiences, then that is what they'll experience. Like you see, the argument is when, when you try to control life, right? Then what happens is it never goes your way and you're constantly disappointed when you just live true life and experience life and enjoy every moment. You can't be disappointed because the next moment isn't yours until it comes, right? So you can't, you can't be sad. You didn't live the life you were never meant to live. I love it. I love it. Right? Like, I mean, like if you die yeah. at 45, right? I'm 40. I had cancer at 30. So mm -hmm. when I got cancer at 30 and it told me, Hey, you might die. You may not, you know, like, I don't know. We have to biopsy you. We have to do this, blah, blah, blah. 
okay. I was like, biopsy me. And they were like, well, you don't want to take time. I was like, take time for what? Like, if my experience is to live, I'll live. If my experience is to die, I'll die. I don't, I'm not worried about the experience ahead. I'm only excited about going through it. So I don't really care. You see, it, when you're, when you're unconscious, you live, when you're young, you live life through this basic idea of good and bad. Your parents teach you this. You're a first circle mentality person. Everything is good and bad. It's good and evil, you know, like good and bad, right? Yeah. And then as you grow older, your mentors and teachers tell you, no, 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 it's not about good and bad. It's about right and wrong. There's a societal component that comes into the second circle in an identity. Everything is about right and wrong. The, mm. Your mentors, the law, the group you live in, the government you live in, everything is about right and wrong. This isn't about good or bad because good and bad is open to interpretation, but right and wrong is not. It's about law, right? Mm. So, so they go, well, this is a common law. So this is right and wrong. These are the two circles pre-consciousness. So what that means is that the only matter is choice, the choice of right and wrong or good and bad. But choice comes after intent. So it's already too late when you've made the choice. You're not in control. It's already too late. So because the choices aren't given by you, right? They're, they're yeah. given by your environment that has right. formed these choices. And you have to choose between two or three. You don't choose between 60. You don't choose between 100. Mm. You're like two. It's right or left. You know, it's good or bad. You know, right or wrong, right? Yeah. When you're conscious, life is no longer about choice. It becomes about intent. What is your intent for a situation? Because your intent will lead the experience you live after. You understand what I mean? And the Absolutely. choices that come with it will be driven by that intent. So if intent is not present, then there's no direction. You're not the captain. So when you're conscious, life becomes about intent. So if you can in get to a state in your life where you have consciousness and you therefore gain intent first, and that's your decision factor is not choice, but intent, then life will always flow in the direction you intended to go. So intent for, choice, intent, for the, for the life of intent for the type of success you want to have in business, intent for the type of relationship you want to have, intent for any, the experiences any, that you want to have. Yes, exactly. I exactly. Awesome. This, awesome. this is where, you know, this is where people really miss the mark in every aspect of their life. They, they stay stuck in, a, in an environment of choice, thinking that the better my choice is, the further I got in life. And that's the mistake. What, well, another thing that really stood out in your book was, you know, obviously the, the choices that you make on a daily basis to involve yourself in certain conflicts or not to go places to do things that uh, may be detrimental to your future, to your success. And to really having that uh, uh, that that uh, that restraint to be able to understand and see not only today, tomorrow, but you mentioned that you know as you get uh, further into your evolution and into the second and, and third circles and beyond, you see five years uh, uh, down the road, you see a lifetime already in mm -hmm. front of you down the road. It, would you think that you know? In my experience, I know that that's. <laughs> it, it, that's that's played a very big part in 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 the way that my the trajectory of my life has gone making wrong decisions for living in the moment how do, how does one evolve do you just have to go through it or can you learn it can you can it be taught well i taught it to you in my books i'm teaching you what it takes to basically get through the evolutionary stages like but look, here, here's the thing. Each life experience is unique to itself. My life experience is not the same life experience you're going to have. Mm. Now, the stages in which human evolution occurs are, are not specific to each lifetime. So in other words, each person in the life cycle may be very much going through different experiences. Like my set of experiences were different than the ones you had growing up, somewhat similar, somewhat not, et cetera. But it doesn't change the evolutionary track you will undertake, even though the experiences you get to learn those evolutionary tracks are going to be different than mine. So all you really need is your ability to just understand what are the checkpoints and what are the lessons I'm supposed to. Now, how you get to that learning is individual to each person. So 
I would love to tell you like, look, go build a business. This will happen for you. Mm -hmm. But maybe building a business does not lead you to learning leadership like it did for me. Instead, building a business teaches you how to learn to deal with failure, right? Like, so two exact same experiences, yeah. two different outcomes. So, so there is no singularity the path each human takes, but there are specific checkpoints that consciousness needs to go through in order to evolve internally where philosophy meets psychology and basically an individual to make sense of their own existence. But to be fair, every human life holds a different purpose. So, so would I be able to teach someone whose purpose is to heal people exactly what to do to get there, to get to that purposefulness within themselves? No, but I can tell you specifically that by going through these books, you will get a better understanding of who you are internally. And from there, you can choose for yourself how to handle yourself. You know, like that, that's all I can do. Like if we say something along the lines of, if we say something along the lines of this, if, if I said to you, I'm trying to find an example that you can use for every single person. Okay. Every one of us will get to our purpose differently. Okay. Like every one of us, doesn't matter what your purpose is. However, I can teach you specifically how to be purposeful as a character in an individual that allows you to discover your own purpose faster. If I say entrepreneurship is self-employment, someone says, well, I'm self-employed, therefore I'm an entrepreneur. Your definition defined the word. But if I stop and I said, no, it's not. And I said, entrepreneurship is unity around the creation. Mm. So if we do that, mm. then, then the measure becomes simple. How many people did you unite around your creation? Mm. Oh, my phone impacted a billion people. Good entrepreneur. Mm. Oh, I got nine customers, not an entrepreneur. Right? Like, okay, a clear guideline or definition enables an understanding of measure. Right? So if you, if you say it to someone like you're good or bad, they go on what value scale? Like what define, if you tell me, PJ, are you rich or poor? Mm. Whose value skill defines that? Well, well, fine. I have enough money to access things I want. I have enough cars, but I know a guy whose boat is worth more than my entire $20 million car collection. Mm. Does that mean he's rich or I'm richer if he has a boat and have 20 cars, right? Like, mm. so what, what I'm saying is these value skills are subjective, right? Like right. To, if you ask a billionaire, if I'm rich, he'll tell you he's broke as fuck, right? Mm. If you ask a, a poor person who's got five grand in their name, how is PJ? They'd be like, oh, he's the richest guy I know. So, right. so these are these, but which one is accurate? Am I mm. poor or am I rich? So the value scale is never even like you, you can, because perspective defines that. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now, however, if we use one singular method of definition and say, you're rich once you have $10 million a year. Okay. Is it not easier for you to now define if you're rich or poor? Yeah. Right. I mean, it's pretty black and white, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like the, if this is the measure I'm following, right? Yeah, absolutely. So consciousness, right? Consciousness does not, and purpose and things like that, does not have a black and white line like that through it. So, so by being able to understand that it's not about 10 million, 100 million, 5 million, $200 or not, and to understand that consciousness is about control of time at 100% of the time, all the time. If I said something like that, then you would have to have enough self-honesty to answer that question. <clears throat> Do you have control of your time 100% of the time, every time? If the, if, are you Good having question. every experience you wish mm -hmm. to have in the world? Yeah. Not saying, are you have like, if you dreamed of a vacation, then it's not, you're not having the experience you want. Mm -hmm. If you go on vacation and you're limited by what your money can do, you're not having the experience you want. So the, the path to ultimate consciousness is to remove these societal roadblocks. And one of these is money. Mm. Money is a societal roadblock. So if we don't master money, we can't become conscious. 
And the spiritual world has us believing something very different. Mm. Oh, it's about forfeiting money and evil societies and governments want to control you. Money is a tool. That's all it is. It's a tool to allow individuals to prove their capacity to participate and trade. That's it. Like, what, what do we have before we had money? Hey, I make food. You make linens. Trade me linens for my family. I'll trade. But I need food every day, and I don't need linens every day. Right. So how can I pay you for food? Mm. Well, I have to trade my linens against someone else who has a car who will then give me a car so I can trade you a car into your food. Right. But the value of these things is impossible. It might cost 10 grand and a linen cost $12. The guy doesn't need 60,000 linens, right? So it's not going to work. So we create a currency. Someone's capacity for output to create goods or material or mental output or whatever it is, is able to be traded for currency. Yeah. So once we understand that, we, we don't really look at money in an evil way. Money is just one's capacity to harvest resources and create value for others so that they are repaid by money that others have no resources to give them back. That's right? so, like, so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. It's black and white. It's not yeah. complicated. Yeah. But we complicate it when we have an emotional reaction to what we cannot do. What does mm. that mean? I cannot create money. So I think money is evil. Like I have not learned how to create money or resources. So I think money is evil. Mm. Oh, I think business is terrible. Because I'm not a person of value that makes corn or makes linens or doing for I don't know how to participate in your game. So it's a rigged game or it's a stupid game or you guys are all part of an evil ploy and the government's coming to take us and right. blah, blah, blah. You know, like right. when I don't understand something and I'm not willing to learn it, I reject it. That's how the human mind works. That's yes. how ego works. So the argument is, will you educate yourself to learn how to create value? If you don't, then you won't and you won't participate. But the argument is you can't become conscious without that participation. Mm. So that's see, that's the key the right there that people don't get. Oh, right. Correct. That's it's that's the, the key. You, it's not an option. Like, yeah, like it's not optional. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the part people don't understand. Like they think that getting rich or making money is a question of how much money it's not resources have to be created an individual has to be able to harvest and create resources and there is no way it can get to its purpose without learning how to harvest resources i don't give a fuck if you're making money off of it or not or that yeah. you're good at it or not or you're a billionaire at it or not i don't care you're greedy it doesn't change the fact of what your outcome needs to be first before you can get to the next stage and Amazing. this business of creating resources does not mean you have to create resources for other people or just for the sake of money. What, you're building character to build resources. What if you wanted to build resources for abandoned children in Africa? Okay, well, build those resources. That's great. Mm. Do it after you're a billionaire. Go do that. You know, like go, go harvest that character, that intelligence you grew building a whole digital company or building this car dealership that had nothing to do with anything. People called you greedy. Take that money yep. and go do something you want to do. And that's what I say. Right? My but, goal but is always, it, yeah, my goal has always been at the end, I'd like to be a philanthropist, right? But there's no broke mm -hmm. philanthropist, right? So you have to conquer mm -hmm. that money aspect of it first so you can position yourself to what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. What What is a day in the life? And, and I, I appreciate your time. And I'm just going to end this off, you know, with this last question is like, you know, you mentioned time, you mentioned the value of it. What does a day in the life of PJ look like? I'm curious, like what time do you get up? What, like, what do you do on a normal day? What do I do on a normal day? Yeah. Uh, whatever is on the agenda to get done today. Like I don't look at it as uh, you know, I try my days by the, by the day, by the week, not really like by the months, et cetera. Uh, it, whatever it is like when you, when you say you're a person, of purpose, you become purposeful in your everyday action, not just in the grand scheme of what the larger scale is. So you have to be able to get whatever you need done. If today I need to be a general contractor to basically get a construction project going, then that's what I'm going to do today. If mm -hmm. I need to tomorrow be the, uh, sales director of my own company, then I'll do that. You know, like, so I don't have a specific set of like, I want the world to work in this box I've created for myself. And this is the only box I'll exist in. So I'll do whatever basically is the experience I want to have 
uh, in this very moment. And right now I'm trying to basically finalize uh, a giant commercial building that I bought. So I'm trying to basically yeah, I'm get looking that forward done. to that. Yeah, that's been my priority for 30 days. So yeah. that's what I've been trying to get uh, that's done be... on a daily basis. But, but generally speaking, uh, yeah. I you don't put out some pictures on that too, didn't you? A little, yeah, yeah, just a yeah. little bit. You know? yeah. Trying to put some teasers out there, not too much, you know? Yeah, that's going to be sweet. So what, what's the team look mm -hmm. like right now? I mean, the team's grown pretty, you know, pretty significantly. It's from where from where you started back in 2016, how did you start and where where's the team now? As far as the number of people, I mean, I started in 2008. We were three oh, people. Okay. With, with with who? Uh, 2015, huh? You started with three people. Three people in 2008. Mm. Uh, 2015, we had maybe a team of like eight to ten. Okay. On the digital media side, now we have about 25, 30. Nice, nice. Like awesome. some of our contractors, they come and go. You know, like we add or or yeah. subtract based on the need for the month for the year, but. Generally speaking, we have, I'd say, a core team of like 17 people. Awesome. Well, man, PJ, listen, I, I've taken up quite a bit of your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for all the knowledge. Thank you for everything that you're doing for in, in all these communities. Uh, I can tell you from a personal standpoint, uh, you know, the time that I've been a part of uh, ECH and WTA, you know, I've gotten my first two exotics, you know, I've gotten my first uh you know luxury watches and so on and so forth so i mean it's just you know it's just uh made so many of the things that i felt in my mind that were you know so hard to achieve become achievable and uh you know i just want to thank you for everything that you're doing for the community well i am glad that it's you found it valuable i've decided that my cosmic uh identity was to teach so that's what i choose to do uh, in terms of everything I touch and interact with. So I hope you found that value and everyone else who watches this show does as well. Appreciate that, man. I look forward to uh, catching up again, maybe in the future, uh, as uh, you know, you're, we follow your journey and uh, I'm really excited to see, you know, what you do and where you go next. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. Stick around. It's going to get very exciting very soon. <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. Look forward to it. Take care, buddy. All right, bro.